on the season, Iowa has six wins and four losses. Now, what are the similarities in these games and what can it lead the Gophers to know exactly what to do to come out with a victory or end up with a loss? You are locked on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Uh, Golden Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Today, we're talking about what the commonalities, what the similarities from the losses and the teams that have beaten Iowa and what that means the Gophers might have to do in order to secure a win and what seem to be the death blows when it comes to losing to Iowa. There's some commonalities that are very interesting in that those games that Iowa has played and we're going to dive into it today. It should be a quicker episode for you, but first be sure to head on over to YouTube, hit subscribe, join the community and let me know what you are looking forward to when it comes to the Iowa game. What what is happening? What is going on through your mind? I need to know down in the comments on YouTube. Be sure to follow wherever you get podcasts at Locked On Golden Gophers. But let's wait no further. Let's do this thing. Let's talk about these commonalities. The first thing we're going to talk about is the four losses that Iowa has and what is similar. What are we seeing? What were the scores Everything, all of that jazz. So let's jump in. Iowa has four losses on the season. Now, the first loss was at Iowa State, or not at Iowa State, but versus Iowa State. They lost 10 to 7. Their second loss came against Michigan, where they lost 27 to 14. Then you had the loss to Illinois, which was 9 to 6. And then at Ohio State, 54 to 10. So that's the four losses right there. Iowa State, Michigan, Illinois, and Ohio State. Now, in these losses, Iowa never scored above 14 points. They only had two scores, whether that be a field goal and a touchdown, whether that be just straight up field goals, whether that be you name it, uh, two touchdowns. I think there was one game with two touchdowns, and that was the Michigan game. Now, overall, on top of that, in three out of four, Of those losses, let's talk about this first. Well, before I get to that one point, we'll talk about what happened, how many sacks were given up. So Iowa had one sack against Iowa State, one sack against Michigan, zero sacks against Illinois, and zero sacks against Ohio State. Now, when it came to turnovers given, so how many turnovers did Iowa have? Like that Spencer Petras or whoever else gave up. Michigan had, or in the Iowa State game, there was three turnovers given to Iowa State. There were zero given to Michigan, one given to Illinois, and six turnovers given to Ohio State. Now, on the flip side of that, how many turnovers did they force? Well, in the Iowa State game, they had three turnovers first forced. Michigan, they had zero turnovers forced. Illinois, they had three turnovers forced. And Ohio State, they had two turnovers forced. So when you're looking at that turnover battle, in three out of those four losses, Iowa lost or tied in the turnover battle. The only game in which Iowa won the turnover battle and still lost was in the 9-6 to loss to Illinois, where they forced one, or no, they were given one, excuse me. So they forced three turnovers And they got or gave up one turnover. So they forced three, gave up one. That was the only game where they won the battle in the turnovers, but they still lost the game, a game strictly in which they gave up field goals. Just some quick similarities between them. Now, also, one thing I did want to point out is yardage in these games. So overall, in the Iowa State game, they gave up 129 rush yards, 
and 184 pass yards, 313 total yards when it came to the offense, when it came to the opposing team's offense. Michigan, 172 yards on the ground, 155 through the air, 327 total. Then the Illinois game, 200 rush yards, 116 pass yards, 316 total. And then finally in the Ohio State game, 294 pass yards, 66 rush yards, and 360 yards total. What are you noticing there? What are you hearing there? And it is, in fact, that getting over 300 yards in each and every single one of these games when it came to combined yardage, that was a trend. Every team that has beaten Iowa has gotten over 300 total yards. In fact, most of those games, they had over 100 rush yards. The only game in which that wasn't the case was Ohio State, where they had nearly 300 passing yards by themselves. All, otherwise, all the other ones, 129 rush, 172 rush, 200 rush. That's something to keep in mind as we keep talking about what the similarities and commonalities are. But those were the things that stood out when it came to Iowa's losses. So now let's take a look at the flip side. In Iowa's wins, what were the things that stood out that trended similarly, the commonalities, in order for Iowa to end up winning the game in those similar stat fields. Knowing these things can help you know what the Gophers game is going to be like if we're giving up a certain amount of sacks or if we're not getting enough yardage. I mean, these can't be the end-all be-all, but there has to be some sort of trigger, some sort of defining factor between these games to be able to tell early on or within the system of the game how this one is trending. So let's take a look at the wins coming up next. But first, we got to talk to you about Nugenics. This episode is brought to you by Nugenics. Now, do you remember when winning felt easy? That's because you were younger, you were at the peak of your testosterone production in what some call the winner's hormone. Wouldn't it be nice to get you back to that winner's edge again and getting your old swagger back in your step? Well, if you want more energy to counter the negative physical effects of aging, well, you can try out Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster with Testafin. It will help you turn back the clock and re-energize your workouts and get better results at the gym and help you look and feel like the person you want to be. All you have to do is try out Nugenics. Nugenix Total Tea contains a man-boosting key ingredient like testafin, and it has been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. Now, Nugenix Total Tea is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC, and you can get a complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea when you text to th college to 231. 231. Again, that's college to 231 231. If you text now, you'll get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast. Again, it's absolutely free. All you have to do is text college to 231 231 today. Now, as a disclaimer, texting enrolls you in the current recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Now, let's jump back into what we were talking about. We talked about the commonalities of the losses that Iowa suffered, but what were the commonalities of the wins? Now, in those games that they were winning, scoring South Dakota State, when they beat South Dakota State, they won 7-3. to three. The Nevada, 27 to 0. Rutgers, 27 to 10. Northwestern, 33 to 13. Purdue, 24 to 3. And then Wisconsin, 24 to 10. So, what you're seeing commonality score wise is actually Iowa scoring over 20 points in each of those victories, except for one. So, five out of six, Iowa was winning by scoring 20 or more points except for that season opener, which I think you can give a little bit of leeway because it was a season opener, because it was such a new thing, getting back into the swing of things, you see it breaks the trend. Now, outside of that, you're also seeing that most teams are scoring only about one score on the board. The only game in which they cracked over 10 points was Northwestern, where they cracked 13. 
So otherwise you have three, zero, 10, three, and 10. So teams weren't able to get touchdowns on the board outside of that Northwestern game. Now looking at the turnover battles, was it a similar trend? Was it the opposite of what we saw from the wins? Yes, it was. In five out of the six wins, Iowa won the turnover battle flat out. And South Dakota State was the only one in which that was not the case. The very first game of the season where again, Maybe it's more of an anomaly than it is a trend. So in that South Dakota State game, they gave up two turnovers and they forced zero. But outside of that, every single one of their wins, they have won the turnover battle. And so Nevada, they had one turnover first, forced, zero given up. Rutgers, they won three turnovers forced, zero given up. Northwestern, they had one turnover forced, zero given up. In Purdue, they had two turnovers forced, zero given up. And then in Wisconsin, they had four turnovers first and one given up. So in these wins, they gave up outside of that first game. They gave up one turnover and otherwise gave up none in the rest of them. And that one was in the most recent game versus Wisconsin. So Iowa took care of the ball a lot better when it came to their wins, which makes sense. But You never know if that's the case or if they've been winning ugly, but it looks like when they are able to win that turnover battle, even if it's just by one, but typically it's more than that, they're ending up winning those games. And that is showing that elite Iowa defense. Now, on top of that, what did the sacks look like? So in the wins, I told you there was only one sack in the Iowa State, in the wins against Iowa, there's one sack in the Iowa State game that Iowa had. There was one sack in the Michigan game. Zero sacks in the Illinois game and zero sacks in the Ohio State game. What did it look like in Iowa's wins? Well, in Iowa's wins against South Dakota State, they had four sacks forced. In Nevada, they had four sacks forced. In Rutgers, they had three sacks forced. In Northwestern, they had seven sacks forced. Purdue, they had three sacks forced. In Wisconsin, they had four sacks forced. So that's three plus sacks in every single one of their wins. Every single one. There wasn't a one sack game. There wasn't a two sack game. Every single victory, Iowa forced three or more sacks. So when they're getting the pressure on the quarterback, when they're able to win that turnover battle, they're winning these games. It's as simple as that. When you're seeing games trend in that direction, it's usually not good for the opponent. In fact, every single time this year, it has not been good for the opponent. Now, finally, looking at the rush yardage and the pass yardage, what are we seeing? Well, Overall, the South Dakota State team put up 120 total yards, 33 rushing. Nevada put up 151 total yards, 69 rushing. Rutgers put up 361 yards, 61 total rushing, 300 passing. Northwestern had 178 total yards with 18 rushing. Purdue had 25 or 255, excuse me. Total yards, 87 rushing, and then Wisconsin had 227 yards and 51 total rushing. So a a quick trend across those is every single one of those, except for one game, was under 300 total yards. So we saw the trend of getting over 300. You were seeing victories. The only game in which that did not happen was the Rutgers game, where Rutgers passed for over 300 or for 300 yards and rushed for 61. But... If you notice in there, the rushing was very poor across all of those games. In fact, only one even got above 80 yards. None of them got above 100 yards. So when you're able to find success in the rushing game and get that going, you're able to help yourself to beat this team. So you talk about the trends in yardage. You talk about the trends in sacks. You talk about, again, winning that turnover battle. But then there were two other things. In every single one of their victories, they had a running back, a single rusher that had 60 plus yards and typically had a rushing touchdown. Now, typically that rushing touchdown came from that lead yardage producer on Iowa's running end. But I think one out of the five or either one or two out of those six wins, the touchdown came from somebody else on the ground. But regardless, they've always had a one runner with 60 yards or more typically leading the way on the ground. Caleb Johnson has been that runner for Iowa in the last three games and in four out of six of those wins. So again, Caleb Johnson, a huge impact for this team, especially down the back stretch of the year. Then finally, another thing, and the final thing I want to talk about in these wins is Iowa's defense scored in three out of the six of these games, and they kicked for nine or more points 
kicked for nine or more points in two out of the six. So in five out of six games, either their defense scored or their special teams really put the team ahead when they're adding and contributing a lot of kicks to the game. So those are some things to look for when it comes to wins. But what does that all mean? What are the things to keep in mind and the final things we want to talk about when it comes to what Minnesota needs to do, what they cannot do, and how they can walk away with a victory and bringing Floyd of Rosedale back to Minnesota. That's what we're talking about coming up next. First, let's talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Again, the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis. They've got sports podcasts. They've got the latest odds and trends in every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer to esports, you name it, they even have a virtual casino and live betting. They're always fast and easy way to get your betting fix. Head on over to the website today to learn more about the latest trends and actions. Bet online where the game starts. All right. So like I said, thank you for making Lockdown Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers sports. And if you need more information on the ever-changing sports landscape, then be sure to tune in to Locked On Sports today where they're giving you the biggest and hardest-hitting sports stories in a quick 30 minutes or less. So if you don't have time to realize what's going on in the day when it comes to the biggest breaking sports stories, be sure to follow Locked On Sports today. And thank you again for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers sports. Now we're talking about the commonalities and what needs to happen to get this thing done. We talked about the keys in yesterday's show and were those keys correct? Are we seeing that with these trends? Well, in wins versus Iowa, like we said, teams either tied or won the turnover battle against Iowa. Only one game was an outlier there. So You got to see it. You got to win the turnover battle. And that was one of the keys that we discussed. So still trending in that direction. Now, like we said, teams forced one or more turnovers in each of these games where they had a true shot at beating this Iowa team. Iowa State forced three turnovers against Iowa. Michigan didn't. They were the only exception to this rule. Illinois forced one, and then Ohio State forced six. In fact, South Dakota State, who had a shot at winning the game throughout the entirety of it, forced two. So in order to have a shot at beating Iowa, you have to force turnovers. We talked about it, and you want to win the turnover battle. So putting those two things together, turnovers will be a key and a heavy key in this matchup. Now, when it came to total yardage, if you saw over 300 total yards, you had a good shot at beating them. Rutgers was the only team that didn't, and they didn't see success in the running game. Running game is important because you're helping control the clock, and it seems to be an area where if you can find success and generate success, you can help yourself come out with a victory. If you have over 100 rushing yards, typically you're going to see success against this Iowa team. They don't give up a lot of rush yardage. So when you're able to create that success on the ground, you're able to help yourself into winning the game. Only three teams were able to get over 100 yards. That was Iowa State, that was Illinois, and that was Michigan. So Chase Brown, Blake Corum, and Jarrell Brock, all better running backs, more elite running backs in the college football landscape. We got one of those in Mo Ibrahim, so we got to find ways to get success for him, got to create openings for him, and the O-line has to come to play. In fact, the O-line might be the most important thing in this game because you cannot allow the pressure, you cannot allow sacks, otherwise Iowa will dominate this game. Again, if they have three or more sacks, they've won every single time. Every single time, no exceptions. If they force three more sacks, it shows the trend of how much pressure they are getting on the quarterback and they are winning. But if you can keep your quarterback clean, if you can keep them on the ground and only allow one sack, only allow that little to no pressure. And again, keeping the ball on the ground effectively, you are or have been able to beat Iowa. So give up one sack or less, get the rushing game going, and then allowing no defensive scores or multiple kick opportunities for Iowa. 
In the PAT game, they are perfect on the season. In the field goal game, they are 14 of 18. All four of those misses in the kicking game have been between 40 and 49, and they have two kicks past the 50 that were both good. So you got you can't allow them to have all these opportunities to kick. If you can keep them out of that red zone area, if you can not allow the pressure to be overwhelming, and if you can get that rushing production going, you can have this team. So overall, our keys of turnovers and needing to create them and containing Caleb Johnson were absolutely on point, sticking with those. One thing I would change is that we said we wanted to create a heavy amount of pressure on Iowa in order to win this game. Now, if you can do that, absolutely, you want to do that. But I looked at the sacks given up by Iowa and they were all over the board. They were all over the board. There was no real trend. People got pressure on Iowa and still lost. So maybe not as heavy of a key this week, but on the flip side, not allowing pressure to be forced on you was a major factor. So let's flip that key. You have to keep it clean. You have to allow your quarterback time and you have to find rushing production on the ground. The O-line in turnovers will be the absolute focus of this game, whoever wins the turnover battle and has, if or if Minnesota can create less pressure from their O-line, that will be the decider in this game. Book it. When we review this game on Monday's show, if Minnesota gave up two to three, four sacks or more, you probably lost the game. If Minnesota gave up multiple turnovers or lost the turnover battle, you probably lost the game. Those seem to be the number two or the top one and two reasons on how you lose against Iowa. That's going to do it for us. I hope you found something useful in this episode and it got you thinking, it got your brain stimulated and you're ready to go into this weekend knowing what to look for as you're enjoying the game. This is Kane Rob signing off. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow wherever you get the podcast. Row the boat, Skyima, go, go. Go, go.